What's going on YouTube? So as you of course know, Tesla has been the dominant force in electric vehicles for some time now. However, we are finally starting to see some real competition come into the marketplace. And I'm standing next to one of the first such products, the all new from the ground up Ford Mustang Mach-E. Besides for the name, it shares basically nothing with any existing Ford product and is aimed squarely at the Tesla Model Y. So how does it stack up? Let's go ahead and find out. So of course this vehicle debuted to a bit of controversy because it is called a Mustang while being an electric crossover. We're not going to get into that inside of this video, everyone's got their own opinion on that. We're going to focus on the merits of this itself and I have to say you can tell the merits right as soon as you walk up to it because this is a really really nice looking crossover. So up here in the front, of course, it is an electric vehicle, so there's no need for a grill. However, you do still have a black outline that goes around it. Of course, with this fully blacked out model, it uh, gives it a really nice and stealthy look. And you've got that typical pony up there in the front. Now, coming over here to your headlights, again, you have a nice sleek headlight design. Um, the standard model is going to come with a reflector LED headlight. However, all the rest of them come with these projector LED headlights and the really nice looking dynamic turn signals. Now taking a look down here at our wheels, uh, among the trim levels that are currently available right now, you have various 18 and 19 inch alloy options. Some of them come with the aerodynamic covers, but here with this premium model, we have the really nice looking 19 inch contrast alloys that are exposed. And then, of course, you've got your Mach-E branding down here at the bottom. And up here at the mirrors, uh, these are going to be heated, power folding, and have built-in blind spot monitoring as standard equipment. All right, so obviously one of the most unique design elements about the Mach-E is the side profile because it has that really cool sloping design um, that I'm a huge fan of. Now, as far as the length, it comes in at 185 inches, which is around the same as the Model Y and you're probably noticing that the door handles are kind of hidden and that's because here in the front Drew will explain that uh, how you get in but they're completely sleek to give it that really cool look. Now walking around to the rear itself this is really going to be the only area that resembles the Mustang because you have these really cool LED tail lights. Now these are going to be standard on all of the models and these are fully LED and I really like the element of the sequential turn signal uh, here as well as the fact that it's amber um, so that's pretty cool and then dropping down of course you're not going to have any exhaust pipes but as far as the towing is concerned they don't recommend towing which you can tow 3,500 pounds on the Model Y. All right now Ford is including all of their Copilot 360 safety system standard on the Mach-E which I'm really happy to say um, and that's going to include Ford emergency braking and pedestrian detection, lane keeping assist, auto high beam headlamps, and adaptive cruise control as well as evasive steering assist. Now that also includes rear auto braking and more importantly there's an active drive assist kit that's not turned on yet but it will be on the premium trims and higher and that allows for hands-free highway driving and that's going to be available in the third quarter of 2021. Well guys as you can see this Mach-E is bringing a lot to the table when it comes to design but now let's go ahead and check out the interior take it out in a spin but before we do all of that, please help us out by hitting that subscribe button down below. It's completely free. So what are you losing? So for the Mustang Mach-E, you do have the traditional uh, Ford key fob with the Mustang emblem on it. Um, however, you do not actually have to use this if you don't want to. You can use your phone as the key. Now, to get inside this Mach-E, it's a little bit interesting. Uh, you have this little handle here. This doesn't actually open it up though. You press this button right here. This releases it and then you pull it open with the handle. The 
got some really, really cool animations that come onto the display when you open up the door. Really nice looking stuff. All right, but let's go ahead and talk about this cabin in general. Uh, really cool looking space. Um, you know, just absolutely nothing like any other Ford product. And as far as your color and material options for this premium version, uh, you have the ActiveX leatherette seating. Extremely realistic feeling uh, seating. Um, one of the best imitations I've ever felt. I really love the design as well. And this is extremely comfortable. Uh, this is the standard black choice, but you can also get a light gray if you prefer that. Now, turning over here to your door trim, you do have leather that runs across the armrest with the color contrast stitching detail. You have some more leatherette above that, and it is soft along the top. You will find standard three-person memory seating, and all four of your windows are one-touch automatic. Heading down here to your seats, these are the standard eight-way power adjusting seats with two-way lumbar support. And then like I already said, really I can't have enough price for these seats, they are spectacular. Now of course Tesla takes a lot of flack for build quality. And I am happy to report that Ford put their hundreds of years of manufacturing experience to good use and made this cabin a really nice place to spend time. So taking a look at some of our materials, our upper dashboard is finished in a textured plastic. However, what you're probably noticing more is the fact that we have across the entire dashboard a speaker grill. So this really looks uh, very nice. I love this, uh, the texture that this has on it. Um, and of course the fact that as we'll see in a little bit this does help the sound system as well Now as we move down below that we have some more textured trim. We have a leatherette with a color contrast stitching detail Down here where our shifter is we have more leatherette trim that surrounds all of this And as we go down to our extreme lower areas We do find some pieces that are hard touch plastic, but everything in here fits together really really well and very solid despite this being a complex design now to start it up, we do actually still retain a power button, so you're just gonna put your foot on the brake and press it to go. And once it starts up, uh, you can see we have a gauge cluster, kind of more like a traditional vehicle. This is 10.2 inches, of course, it's fully digital and reconfigurable and that allows you to see things like your speed, your range, stuff like that right in front of you instead of off to the side like in a Tesla. Uh, since I'm looking over here, I will point out you can change the color themes of this. So you can do light or you can do dark or you can have it automatically adapt. Just depends on what you want. And when you change the drive modes, the design of this also changes. Now you're probably noticing we've got some flashing lights here. Um, this is our sensor that is making sure I'm paying attention when we're using autonomous driving functions. Um, the flashing lights you see, you cannot see those in real life. I want to emphasize that. You cannot see those in real life. This is something that the camera picks up on for some reason, but uh, you won't see weird flashing lights distracting you in real life. Now, coming back to the steering wheel, we got a really nice looking leather wrapped steering wheel. It does have a double the color contrast stitching detail, really nice leather, and of course, your Mustang emblem on the front. As far as the wheel itself, it is going to be manual tilt and telescoping, and here with this premium model, it is also heated. All right, now let's go ahead and look into interior storage, because this is super impressive. So I'll start out underneath of our armrest here. You have a uh, little console. I shouldn't say little, because when you slide it open, it's actually quite large you do have a felt lining down here at the bottom and lots of space inside now there's a ton of places i can stick the coupons but i'm going to stick them in here since this is the enclosed area and as you can see they fit in there just fine now as we move on from there you're going to notice you have your cup holders you have another floating console here with this part being a wireless phone charging pad and then you have your two usb ports up there but we're not done yet underneath of that we have another storage area where you can stick, um, you know, just about anything, and it is kind of hidden underneath of the first item. 
So definitely tons and tons of storage inside of here and good utilization of space. Now, one of the reasons we can utilize that space is because we have an electronic shifter. So this is very similar to other Ford products. You're just gonna twist to D for drive. Um, you do have a low mode if you need to use that. And then R is for reverse. Now, when you go into reverse, you're gonna notice we have a 360 degree camera system on board with this premium model. That's noteworthy because that's something not available on the Model Y. Really nice uh, display here. It's extremely large, takes up almost the entire 15 and a half inch display. You do have active trajectory. You got your 360 views up here. You can also tap to see certain regions so that you make sure you don't uh, hit a curb or something like that. And you do also have automatic parallel and perpendicular parking abilities. Then for park, just twist over to the P and you do have an electronic parking brake. But now let's go ahead and get to the elephant in the cabin. And that is this gigantic 15 and a half inch display. So just like many other electric products, most of what's going on in the cabin is somehow located inside of this display. So I'm just going to systematically kind of go through all the different things you can expect. Um, and I will talk about, you know, kind of broadly here first, just how nice this display looks. Um, it, in addition to just being gigantic, the resolution on board is fantastic and definitely um, in line with what you get from a Tesla product. So let's start down here at the bottom. This is going to be our climate controls. Um, so to activate that you're just going to tap and you can drag up and down to set your temperature to whatever you want Of course it is a dual zone automatic climate control So you can adjust that right there You also have your three stage heated seats that do automatically come on and off as needed And we also have a heated steering wheel like I already mentioned Now one of the coolest things about this display is right here in the display We have a physical volume knob that's embedded into it uh, that to me is really really cool and I love that touch to still have the analog uh, ability to turn the volume knob. Now as far as the actual speaker setup itself, this is a 10 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. So let's go ahead and give this a sample. So overall sound quality of this is absolutely stellar. Um, really, really nicely fills up the cabin. Lots of bass, just like all the other Bang & Olsen sound systems and other Ford products. And I definitely say it's better than the stereo system in our Model 3. Okay, so let's see. We've got a lot more things to talk about. I won't be able to talk about everything in here because this is a tremendously complicated system. Um, so this is Ford Sync 4A. Um, so it is the newest version, but there's a lot of special touches to be in this orientation from, say, like the F-150 that we reviewed about a month ago. So as far as the general interface, it's mostly split into the main section of whatever you have pulled up up here. Then you've got these little tabs down here at the bottom. It's kind of like multitasking. So when you tap on the specific tab, it moves up to the top portion, as you can see, like that. So I did that with navigation. You can also expand that to take up more space and make those little cards smaller. Uh, but that's more or less what it is, kind of like a tablet. You've got the multitasking and then the top part. Uh, taking a look at the navigation, since I have it pulled up, of course you have really nice graphics. This is a nice and responsive system for the most part, though you do run into a little bit of lag because some of the animations and stuff are very complex. Um, if you tap here, this is where you're going to find like some applications. You also at the top have these suggested apps. So this learns from your behaviors over time. Um, so things like uh, it took my call history and re recognizes that I usually call Mason in the morning. So it's got that recommended as a call thing here in the morning. I will point out finally though, one important feature I think is the fact that you have Android Auto and you have Apple CarPlay and they both run wirelessly on this system. Uh, that's something that Tesla's cannot do currently. 
Now, moving on up here, we do have a frameless auto dimming mirror. And then in the traditional forward place up on the visor, we have our three universal remotes. And then as I turn up here to the roof, you will notice a Tesla-like feature, and that's the fact that the entire roof is made of a piece of glass. So there is no uh, split or anything in the middle. From front to back, we have this one seamless piece of glass, which looks really nice. Um, it does not open, and there is not a shade, but just like in Tesla, it is coated to keep the uh, UVs from hitting you, as well as keeping the cabin cool. Alrighty guys, I'm in the Mach-E's rear seat, and I have to say this is a really, really nice rear seat. Once again, I know Drew mentioned this in the front, but wow, these seats are extremely comfortable. These are a lot nicer than the Model Y seats, I can say that. Now, as far as the space itself is concerned though, you're going to have 38 inches of legroom, 40 inches of rear headroom, which is placed around 2 inches smaller than the Model Y, but this is still plenty of space for an average sized person. Behind rear seating position, I have, I would say, seven inches of rear leg room, and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. And the headroom really is quite a lot, and you, of course, have this panel roof that really helps air it out. Now, as far as the features are concerned, we do have vents here in the center. Um, other than that, you're not going to have a lot of controls, though. No climate controls or heated rear seats on this spe specific model. And then if we drop down, we have a USB Type-C as well as a charging USB. And then if we fold down the center armrest, we do have cup holders inside. Now walking up to the tailgate, we do have a standard hands-free power one on the premium trims and higher. So just wave your foot under the bumper to open up. And wow, that works really fast and opens the tailgate right up. Now, as far as the space itself is concerned, you're probably curious about this metric. Uh, you're going to have 30 cubic feet of space behind the second row seats. That expands to 60 cubic feet if you fold them. If you compare that to the Tesla Model Y, that's around 10 cubic foot less, uh, thanks to that nice sloping roof line that this Mach-E has. Um, but really, I think that's a pretty good amount of space overall. Now, as far as how they finished it, if we lift up the floor here. We do have a little bit of space up under, I would say probably six inches, and it goes all the way back into the second row area. Of course, the batteries up below that. And then we do have a little cubby off to the left side, a 12 volt power outlet, as well as some lighting, and the seats do fold 60-40 split. Now, of course, the beauty of an electric SUV is that you do have a front. So in order to open it, you just locate the hood release, push it twice, and then run up here and then open it. Now, as far as in here, you're gonna have 4.7 cubic feet of space, which is a good amount. I mean, you could definitely fit several duffel bags in here or something if you were really in a pinch for space. And I do really like that Ford has also included this nice divider system, so you can really kind of just use this space however you want to. Now it is also watertight and there's a drain in the bottom so you can use this as a cooler which is a pretty cool party trick or useful for tailgating. Now over here in your passenger seat is going to be power adjusting. Then opening up the glove box for our coupons. Now if you can't buy a car if it doesn't pass the coupon test here in the glove box. And you know I'm happy to say this is pretty good. It's not the biggest glove box I've ever seen, but it does fit the coupons in there just fine, and you could fit a pretty big stack in there. Now up top, we have a sun visor. It does have LED lighting as well as a mirror, and you can also detach and extend. <laughs> wow, wow, that's 70 fast. miles an hour. Yeah, so this is uh, quite fast as most electric vehicles are these days. Um, so what we've got with this model here is going to be a 4.8 second 0 to 60 um, because we have the extended range and all-wheel drive. Um, that's the fastest combination that's currently available. And I say currently available because as you might know, the, there's going to be a GT version and the GT Performance Edition will go 3.5 seconds 0 yeah. 60 estimated by Ford when that comes out so that's gonna be <laughs> pretty insane uh, but you know 4.8 seconds 0 60 is still very fast 
Yeah, and that is actually above the standard range Model Y. Now one thing I do want to point out here is that when he does accelerate, this actually has noise with it. Um, that's something you can toggle on and off in the drive modes, which will fiddle around with the drive modes a little bit later in this drive, but you can turn them on and off the sound effects, which is something that really the Tesla can't do at this point. Yeah, this has, um, I believe it's supposed to sound like a V8, it's kind of like a, a deeper note. It's not incredibly loud or anything, but it does give you a little bit of some kind of noise that when you're accelerating, especially when we're in unbridled, which is the basically sport mode of this vehicle. That's what we're in right now, so it's gonna be the, uh, have the loudest effect. Now, speaking of unbridled while I'm talking about it, when you go into that drive mode, this is the sportiest drive mode. And you can really tell, I mean, this is a, this is a sporty SUV. <laughs> um, just like with the Model Y, um, this is definitely going to be on the sportier side of crossovers for sure. Um, you can tell that the suspension is you know, pretty stiff. It's got a really nice control though when you go around corners and things like that. And especially, like I was saying, when you go into unbridled mode, you have the uh, steering that really firms up. It gets uh, nice and tight and very fast responding. <laughs> thing is fast, it really is. You know, and let's go ahead and just talk about, you know, since he was talking about this as being one of the sportier crossovers money can buy, um, I would say that the ride quality is not bad though. Um, even though it does focus a little bit more on sport than luxury, it certainly soaks up the bumps well, and as we're cruising along here going 60 miles an hour, I mean, I have no complaints with the ride quality. Actually, I feel like it probably rides better than the Model Y, mm -hmm. from what I remember. And I will get a sound level reading uh, going 55 miles an hour. And we're looking at 56 and a half decibels. Um, so that's a good reading. and. You know, obviously with an electric vehicle, you don't have an engine in the background, so. Now we still haven't talked about what actually makes this thing move. Um, so if you're curious about the batteries, um, it's a 68 kilowatt hour battery on the normal one. Uh, we have the extended range, that's gonna be an 88 kilowatt hour battery. Um, and then as far as the range is concerned, obviously that's a highly important thing for an electric vehicle. This one as equipped is the extended range with all-wheel drive, um, and that's going to have 270 miles of range, uh, which is above that of the standard Model Y. Um, and as a maximum, you can get the extended range with rear drive, and that has a 300-mile range. You also probably be curious about uh, you know charging and how quickly that happens. Uh, this does come with 150 kilowatt as your maximum and DC charging, so you can charge at different charging stations around the U.S., namely like Electrify America, stuff like that. I think that's a little bit slower on the top end than what you get in a Tesla, but that's still pretty speedy. And then, of course, you've got your uh, mobile charger, which comes with the vehicle, so that charges about three miles per hour is what Ford estimates. And then with 240, I think they said like 25 miles per hour, yeah. something like that. Yeah, and that actually is gonna be today's air ball. Not that there's really anything wrong with the charging situation for the Mach-E, um, but really just the fact that this goes head-to-head -head against the Tesla Model Y, and that is something that this Mach-E cannot deliver. It cannot do all the supercharging network that the Tesla does have. So that's really gonna be the biggest con of going for this over a Model Y. <laughs> the fact that it's playing a V8 sound effect <laughs> is really hilarious to me. <laughs> and for our slam dunk today, 
Um, this is kind of an interesting one, but we decided to call it the advantages over the Model Y. Um, because kind of up until this point, or really recently, with the electric cars, you kind of just, you look at it and you're kind of like, this does not stack up at all with like what Tesla is offering. Uh, and, and, you know, to purchase it, you'd have to make a lot of excuses. Uh, but that's not really so with this Mach-E at all. There's a lot of distinct advantages that you could point to over a Model Y and reasons that you may prefer this over a Model Y. Um, so, you know, that's, to me, I think is the main thing. You can actually shop this directly, head to head, and actually reasonably make the decision that you prefer this. All right, and let's do the pricing. So you're probably very curious about this because that's pretty much the downfall of a lot of electric cars. They're really expensive. Um, and I'm happy to say this one's not too bad. So for the standard model, that's going to start at $42,895, premium $47,000. Um, the California Route 1, 49.8, and then the GT that's not quite available yet is going to be 60,500. Now this one does have the extended battery, which is a $5,000 option, and then when you add in the destination charge of 1,100, brings this one to 56,040 bucks. Not quite as bad as you would think, though, because this does still qualify for the $7,500 tax credit, which is no longer available on any Tesla product. So uh, what you're really looking at is around 49-ish thousand bucks when you include that tax credit. So overall, it's you know pretty much impossible to talk about electric vehicles without talking about Tesla, and we have been comparing it throughout this video to the Model Y yeah. extensively. Um, you know, and overall, I think that's the biggest takeaway from driving this Mach-E is that this is a legitimately strong competitor. Ford has really done a fantastic job, and for their first full, uh, from the ground up, electric vehicle, um, I'm, I'm really impressed and really excited for all the things to come. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up this in-depth look at the all new 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. Really appreciate you watching this video and if you made it this far, I know you enjoyed watching, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Don't be a bum, join this Car Confections family. You're gonna find a lot of really cool content on there, so be sure to do that. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.